your piece again. Uh, and declarations of interest. Okay. Well, in that case, I have a statement I would like to make, but if you will bear with me while I read it to you. So I'm afraid I'm on the wrong side. Um, I'm aware that there may have been some concern about my involvement in this part of tonight's meeting and whether or not there's a requirement of me to declare a prejudicial interest. I'm going to make a statement which sets out what my position will be and the thinking and the advice I've had which has influenced me in reaching a decision as to what my involvement should properly be. It's a statement by me and not part of any debate which may follow. In reaching my decision, I've consulted the Director of Law, who at my request will repeat the advice he gave me in a few moments. I've taken advice from an advisor for Standards for England, which accords with that given to me by the Director of Law, and I've consulted the Mayor's Guidance Handbook for minutes of experimental. The events covered in this part of the Canarsie report have been the subject now of several internal investigations, three external investigations, a grievance hearing and a disciplinary hearing. Quite a number of members will have been involved in some way, whether through involvement with the working party on charging, in one of the internal or external investigations, have given evidence to the Canarsie inquiry, or as part of the panel for a grievance hearing or disciplinary hearing, and they may well have sought the advice as I have done. I was lead member for part of the plan for the final report. I gave evidence at a disciplinary hearing at the request of the members' panel, and I'm currently mayor, and these are the areas on which I was to address. Also, I've previously declared a prejudicial interest on the advice of the Director of Law because of my friendship with the former Director of Social Services. My friendship with him continues. I declared a prejudicial interest through the period covered by the disciplinary hearings against officers which followed the publication of the PETA in 2008, until that process was completed in 2009, at which point the former director made it clear he would have no further involvement in any investigations, and I was then advised that they no longer required to declare a prejudicial interest, but should continue to declare a personal interest, and that's what I did. At the first opportunity available to me after that, which was in November 2009, I made a speech to council in which I set out what I had known about the charging policy and related issues. When I became aware of problems and my actions up to that time. On that occasion, I apologised to those people who had been affected by service failures that had taken place on my watch as family. I repeated that apology on two further occasions, mm. once in 2010 and again in 2011. Those apologies were sincerely given and were an acceptance by me of a failure to be aware of the full extent of the problem. That failure by me was, and is, a matter of great regret to me. Accepting that failure, however, is very different from demonstrating the lack of integrity. I completely reject that any time in this matter I've been involved in any deliberate wrongdoing, any attempt to cover up wrongdoing or to protect others. Allegations of this nature have been made against me and been to me and similar ones against three other councillors. They were looked at and dismissed by Standard Board for England as not warranting further investigation with the judgment, and I'm quoting from the judgment statement, no cogent evidence was produced to support the allegations. Tonight, members will discuss the part of the Canarsie report which covers social services. The section of the AKA report which covers corporate, corporate governance may also be discussed, as may the Martin Smith report on allegations of bullying by officers of the council and the cadet. I have not been involved in the evidence gathering process for any of these reports and was not asked to be. And though the Knowski report has been redacted, I can tell you I am not referred to in it. I so to my position as mayor today, which is very different from the one I had six years ago or even last year. Indeed, the mayor's guidance book, Campbell, clearly states, and I am quoting again, being mayor is very different from being a councillor. The role has different rules and different restraints. As Mayor, it's my duty to share meetings with this Council and to do so in a fair way. The responsibility I have during the whole year and at all times when I'm performing my duties, and again I'm quoting from the guidance, is to be politically neutral and to step back from politics with a term of office. And as a Mayor, I'm obviously excluded from participation in any debate. In this respect, it's different from the position of Deputy Mayor, who only has any requirement at times when they are acting for the Mayor. I have, during the term of office, rigorously fulfilled the requirement to be impartial. While chairing meetings of this council, I've done everything I can to facilitate open and respectful debate between the parties, and I've been even handed at times when I've had to reprimand members of their, remind members of their responsibilities not to 
who had set the boundary of proper behaviour in this chamber. And I will continue to chair council in this way. Similarly, when I'm engaged on civic duties, I remain completely apolitical. I've treated all elected members in the same way, and I hope they will agree, all with courtesy, and have made no political comment on any subject at all. Making the decision as to what is the proper position for me to take at this meeting has been difficult, and I've listened carefully to the advice I've been given, and I've balanced up different factors. I am now in a different position from what I was before. I have not been involved in the production of any of the internal or external reports which led to the, to the Kanowski report being commissioned. Mm -hmm nor have I been asked to, and I have not been involved in the production of the Kanowski report itself, nor was I asked to be, and I have not been referred to in anything. But I have a continuing friendship with someone who features heavily in the report, though I have not discussed the contents with him. The guidance on this is the test as to whether or not an association with the person involved in an issue would be viewed by a member of the general public as likely to influence the judgment of that member. The final responsibility, of course, in making a decision rests with the member. And so I feel I must err on the side of caution by declaring a personal prejudicial interest by virtue of the fact that I have a friendship with an interested party and pass over the chairing of this part of the meeting um, <coughs> to the chair. I believe this is the correct decision and will be supported in the event of a challenge. And I can ask the Director of Law to repeat to Council the advice he gave to me. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I can in my opinion, and the advice I gave to you, you have a personal prejudicial interest in this matter, and accordingly, in line with the Member Code of Conduct, you should vacate the chair and not be present in this meeting for consideration of this item. I would also like to draw members' attention to the reference to the standards for England in the uh, judgments against um, the effect of complaint against you and other members, which made it clear that it is always the right thing to do to declare an interest uh, when one exists. And so, um, I will vacate the chair with you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Might yeah. I be um, allowed to ask the, um, the director of, the, of law uh, whether in light of um, information in the Martin Smith report, which concerns me, whether he feels that I ought to declare an interest, as it is referred to in the action plan, my view is that the references to you are not critical so as to render uh, any interest a prejudicial interest. Um, however, there clearly is reference to you in the Martin Smith report. <coughs> Um, it is ultimately a matter for you, the judge, and the relevant test is the, um, the person on the local bus um, with knowledge of the relevant matters, would they reasonably believe um, that the interest is so significant um, that it might be likely to affect, sorry, that there is significant likelihood that it would affect your ability to have a public interest. And that's not the same as saying that it actually would, but that to that reasonable onlooker with knowledge of the facts that they could reasonably think that there's a significant risk that you couldn't judge the public interest. Ultimately, Councillor Williams, it is a matter for you. In my personal opinion, I don't believe it crosses the line to become a prejudicial interest, but you may disagree. In light of the advice that you have given, I think it would be wise if I declared a personal interest until the issues of concern to me are dealt with appropriately. And my name is Cleared. Thank you.
Councillors, ladies and gentlemen, the Deputy Mayor of Will.
carried by 35 or 29 if we want abstention. So I have declared that this meeting is adjourned. But I understand that after a short term,